Hey everybody, welcome to Make Moves Now, my name is Charles, I'm your host, and today we're going to learn how to use the paint cloning tool in DaVinci Resolve to clean out a little bit of our footage today. Alright, now just stay still. Alright. Did you get it? No. What? No, your eyes are... Your eyes are all flopping around, they're... No, they're not. No, oh, yes they are. Uh-uh. Yes they are. Uh-uh. Alright. Just... We'll fix it in post! So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 16.2.2. I'm going to show you a few different ways on how to fix this in post. The idea of the shot was that this person was lying unconscious or not able to move. Um, so the, the actor here, a horrible actor of course, was not able to uh, move their eyes was the idea. Of course we're going to have to fix it in post. There's a few different ways that we can do that. So I'll show you two different ways how to do it tonight. Uh, the first way is going to be a quick and easy way, and the second way is a bit more complex. Depends a little bit on what you're looking for and the complexity of the shot, as well as the different actors or elements that are moving around. So we have our clip here in the timeline. I've got it selected. The quick and easy way is just to, to uh, click on it, right click, go to change clip speed, and do freeze frame. Click on freeze frame, do change. It takes this frame, freezes it, click the space bar to play, and nothing moves. Kind of lifelike. Again, one way to do it, but if there's other actors, other people in the shot, it's not gonna work out so well. So we'll go back into our clip, right click, change this back. Here we are. So with the clip selected here, we are now in the edit page. If you're new to DaVinci Resolve, we're going to move it into the Fusion tab. So on the bottom here, click on Fusion. It brings this clip into the Fusion page. Again, new to DaVinci Resolve, we're going to use a node-based system compared to a layer-based system. Same idea holds true. We're trying to layer on one thing over the other. We'll show you how to do that using what's called a Merge tool. Um, but here, we're going to use uh, nodes to connect using left to right in order to create the original and to create some sort of factor change as an output. So uh, real quick, what you can do in the bottom here, for some housekeeping, you can always change the name of the nodes by highlighting, highlighting on it, clicking F2 to change it. So this will change into the original, original. <laughs> and then over here, we're gonna click on the final or for output. There we go. What we're gonna do is highlight the first node we're going to click on that, highlight it, and we're going to look at different tools and effects we can add to this and make a chain that will again connect to the output. You can find all these different effects in the top left under the effects library, under tools. Or you can also, with it being highlighted, click on shift spacebar to bring up all the different tools here as well. So with this one, we're going to look at a way to, fray, uh, to freeze the frame. This. We're going to use a node called the Time Stretcher. Add that here. And we're going to change this. So it's now connecting to both. So we're going to take the original, uh, shoot it out here to the Time Stretcher node. The idea, just like before, we're going to freeze a frame on the shot. And then we're going to isolate it using a polygon mat. And then bring that back in to the output. So when you see it, the rest of the shot can still move around, again, depending on actors or elements that you have. But we're going to try to just isolate the eyes so that they don't move in this particular situation. So with the Time Stretcher node selected, on the far right, over here, under the Source Time, you're going to look at the same time that you're going to use this shot to frame. So find a good shot. You can zoom in here by clicking on control and using the scroll wheel on your mouse. This one looks just fine. So this shot is 46 seconds and 11 frames. So up here, we're gonna do that. 46, 11, enter. Take that out. So you wanna make sure that the only frame that we're using is this 46, 11 here. Just right there. 
The second thing we're going to do with the time stretcher node selected, we're going to click shift spacebar to bring up the tool selection box. We're going to look for a paint node here. We're going to add that. Automatically connects that for us. Okay, nice. The paint node selected, you're going to click on the number one. Oops, number one. And that'll bring this node into the first viewer. On the output here, we're going to keep that as number two. Number one on the left, output, final output's number two. If you click on the space bar to play, you'll see on the right, original's being moved. On the left is the phrase effect. So with that, we're going to make this a little bigger here. And we're going to scroll in. So what we're going to do with the paint tool is we're going to clone or freeze part of the eye. On the top, we're going to go to stroke. Click on that. And then on the far right, under inspector, if this option of these tools aren't here, you can go to the top and click on inspector to open that up. And you're going to look on here. The second option is the clone tool click there. Now what you'll notice is you got a circle for the paint as well as a little X marks a spot in the middle as to where you're looking to uh, uh, use the frame, or use the freeze to paint over with. So we'll show you. Using the Alt tab on your keyboard, you're going to find a spot that you want to click on or use. And we're going to scroll in a little bit here. Alt, click, X marks a spot. The circle is the paint that we're going to use and we're going to slowly paint over the eye here. You can see it's moving a little bit. We might need to go over that a little bit more. So we're just going to isolate just this one eye. And then we're going to do, again, with the paint node selected, we're going to go shift space bar. We're going to add a merge node. Add that. So a merge node is, again, we're using this layer to layer on top of this other one. So we're gonna connect it here again in just a minute. With the merge node selected, we're gonna go shift space again to do a matte control node. And what this is gonna do is gonna help us to create a garbage mat or a mask or a hole in this left shot so we can use and isolate just the eye on the output. So with the matte control, you're gonna have that not highlighted you're going to click on the Polygon tool up here. With the Polygon tool, you can click on uh, the Polygon tool. And then you're going to just create what that mask looks like. Again, Control, Scroll. And we are going to make a little circle here to isolate the eye. There you go. Make sure you connect the, the dots here. And then what we're going to do is with this polygon node again, on the right where the, where the box is, you can use the left or right um, um, buttons on your mouse. We're going to use the left button in this option and bring it over to connect it to the Mac control. The reason we use, I'm sorry, the right button, the right button on your mouse will give us a couple different effects. We're going to use a garbage mat. And then also from the Mac control, we're going to create a merge node to enter it here. So what we're going to do is go up here. Uh, these are just some quick and easy tools that are most often used compared to going here every time or clicking on the, the shift space for the uh, tools. So you can just find the merge node here, click on that. Any tool that you click on here is going to not be connected to anything. And so in order to connect it, you have to hover it over the line. But you need to make sure to hold down the shift button you can see the line will change colors. Let go of the mouse, and now it's connected for us. So with that uh, merge, we're going to add this matte control here. Click on that. So now you can see the node tree that we created is two different things. One is the original output in the bottom here, and the second one branches off. We froze the um, we froze the frame. We painted or cloned that one area. We're going to merge this effect with this matte control, this polygon, this mask, again, the hole that we're creating, and then pipe that down into another merge to create the output. So let's see what uh, happens here. On the right, you'll notice the output 
has the eyeball moving on the left that we just moved, but the rest of the frame is frozen. So what that tells me is that I didn't put in the polygon, I didn't invert that. So we created the hole, as you can see here, put this in the viewer one, that we wanna flip that around, invert it. So now just this area is one that we isolated. So again, looking on the right, output is on the right. You can see the rest of the frame is moving, but the eye that we isolated here. So if we go into the edit tab, you can see the final result, click space. Of course, you have to make the mat a little bit bigger to get around the rest of the eye that's moving. And you can still kind of see some of the, the edging of the polygon that created. Now you may not notice that when you're actually watching it back, but if you wanted to clean that up a little bit, you go back in the, in the Fusion tab, click on the Polygon node, you can scroll in here again. You'll notice that all these edges are a little bit um, jagged, so you can highlight all of these. Go up to the top and smooth those out, so that was a little bit smoother. And then the second piece that you can do, again, is you can highlight these. And on the top, you can go into this D, a double poly. So now there's an in and an out. Click on one of the buttons here. You're gonna right click, raise a drop down. We're gonna go to controls, select outer polygon. And now this will give us an option to provide a little bit of feathering or a little bit of a, of a blending mode, if you would. So let's show this here. Uh, I lost this, give me just a second here. Now if you go to the point that you're gonna be using, you can click on it and start to move it out a little bit. And you'll notice that there's the original one that we created, which is the green. And then the second one, the uh, dotted line is the second one. And then this is the way that you can feather this a little bit. You're taking the polygon, but you're kind of creating two different uh, layers of that, an inner and an outer. And then this is a way that you can kind of blend that a little bit better and again, smooth it out. So if you go back to the edit, you view it again, a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. You can't see the edging as much there. Um, so that's just a way you can kind of smooth it out a bit. Now I didn't create a mask for the other eye or for the mouth in this case. You could do the same thing back in Fusion, what you'd have to do is create the same tree that we just did here. Freeze the frame, paint it to clone it, merge it into this mask that we created, and merge it again. So you can do a second one down here for the second eye or mouth or whatever else you need in your shot, and then merge it back in and to show the output. And then you can do two different or a couple different masks. Hey everybody, thank you for watching. If you liked what you saw today, hit the like button below, hit the subscribe button below, and the bell notification to make sure you get notified every time I upload content and share this content with somebody else. It really helps the channel out. Thanks for watching.